Welcome to the 21st Sports Recap and Reaction for the Cleveland Browns at the Cincinnati Bengals in their Week 9 matchup played November 5th, 2015 in the Battle of Ohio. So we're playing this one in Cincinnati. And we're going to go over every score and the stats and give our breakdown and analysis. So starting off in the first quarter about midway through. The Bengals put the first points on the board when Andy Dalton hit Tyler Eifert for a 9-yard touchdown. Nugent added the extra point, and it was 7-0 Bengals over the Browns. Then, with just seconds left in the first quarter, Travis Coons hit a 27-yard field goal, and it was now 7-3 Bengals over the Browns. So that was it after the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, with about 4.5 minutes left before halftime, Andy Dalton hooked up with Tyler Eifert for their second touchdown of the game. This one, a two-yard pass. Nugent hit the extra point, and it was 14-3 Bengals. Then, with less than half a minute left before halftime, Johnny Manziel finds Juke Johnson Jr. for a 12-yard touchdown pass. Coons adds the extra point, and it was now a four-point game, 14-10. And on that drive, the Bengals went 92 yards in 10 plays in a little over four minutes. And it was the longest drive the Bengals, or the Browns rather, have had in the last two years. So Johnny Mansell leads the Browns downfield on the longest drive of the season, the last couple of seasons since 2013. And we had a four point game at halftime, it was close. In the first half, Mansell was looking pretty good. He was, he had a good completion percentage. He was moving around in the pocket, picking up yards. But then in the second half, the Bengals shut him down. In the third quarter, with about four minutes left, Nugent hit a 28-yard field goal to make it a seven-point game with the Bengals up 17-10. to That was the only point scored in the third quarter. Then in the fourth, about a minute and a half in, Muhammad Sanu scored on an end around, a 25-yard rushing touchdown. Mike Nugent hit the extra point, and it was now 24-10 as the Bengals extended their lead to two touchdowns. And that was on a 91-yard drive by Cincinnati as they went eight plays, 91 yards, in about four and a half minutes. Then, with a little less than eight minutes left to play in this game, Andy Dalton hooked up with Tyler Eifert for their third touchdown connection of the game, a 19-yard touchdown pass. Nugent added the extra point, and it was now 31-10 as the Bengals were up by 21 points. And they would blank the Browns in the second half. They did not allow any points in the third or fourth quarter, and they win this one 31-10 is they dominate in the Battle of Ohio, and they remain undefeated at 8-0. It's the first time the Bengals have been 8-0 in their franchise history. They're 4-0 at home, and the Browns now fall to 2-7 on the season, 1-4 on the road. So the Bengals, very impressive. It was close in the first half. The Browns were actually moving the ball pretty good on the ground, and Mansell was moving around the pocket well. And he was getting the ball to the receivers. But in the second half, you know, the pass rush of the Bengals got to him. They had uh, one, you know, where we had a couple sacks on a couple sets of downs where the Browns, you know, let up two sacks in a row. It was uh, Dunlap and Atkins where they got to Manziel. Also, I noticed in the second half, it seemed that Johnny was having some problems with accuracy. Also, that was coupled with the receivers dropping passes. They, although if you know they were the most accurate passes, they were getting to where they needed to be, but the receivers weren't making the plays. Of course, maybe if the balls were thrown a little more accurate, like there was one, you know, that uh, hit a guy in the knee, and other times, you know, hitting guys in the helmets. But I mean, these are balls that are catchable. If different receivers were making plays on the ball, it seemed like everybody on the Browns was uh, dropping passes. So I don't want to necessarily single one guy out because it was all of them. He saw a lot of drop passes. And Johnny's uh, completion percentage fell off in the second half. He was looking good in the first, but in the second half, he couldn't buy a completion. Whereas Andy Dalton at one point was 10 for 10. I think he might have been even uh, 12 for 12. As he was looking better and better as the game went on. 
and they couldn't stop Tyler Eifert, which is uh, good for me. Had him in fantasy. But uh, Jeremy Hill didn't do so good for me. But he did all right on the ground. You know, the Bengals with their dual attack of Bernard and Hill. They were moving the ball really good on offense. They looked really good all game on offense. Of course, the Browns had some flashes. They did have a couple sacks. But the Bengals, like I said, in the first half, you know, they were struggling to stop the Browns. And Johnny was moving the ball. But then in the second half, they made the adjustments. And that Bengals defense just shut them down. They were really getting after him. And they made the adjustments to Johnny's game. And in the end result, we see Manziel 15 of 33 for uh, just 168 yards, one touchdown. He didn't have an interception, though. There was no turnovers in this game and very few penalties, just six penalties in the game. So it was a pretty disciplined game on both teams' parts. And Andy Dalton, speaking of discipline, 21 for 27, 234 yards, three touchdowns. He also had five yards on the ground off of six carries. And then on the ground for Cincinnati, Giovanni Bernard, 13 rushes for 72 yards. Hill, 15 rushes for 52 yards. And Hill uh, he caught one pass, but he didn't gain a yard. Bernard did catch a pass as well, and he gained 14 yards. So that gave him 86 total yards on the game. And also Sanu with that one end around there, 25 yards and a touchdown. And then through the air receiving, Marvin Jones had five receptions for 78 yards. Eifert, five receptions, 53 yards, and three touchdowns. And A.J. Green, four receptions for 53 yards. Mohamed Sanu, three receptions for 25 yards, which gave him 50 total yards on the game for Sanu. In four, Cleveland on the ground, their leading rusher, Isaiah Crowell, 10 carries for 38 yards. Mansell had four carries for 31 yards. Duke Johnson was their leading receiver with two receptions for 38 yards, including the touchdown that he caught. And uh, Gary Barnridge, two receptions for 35 yards. Bo, three receptions for 31 yards. Crowell also had three receptions for 26 yards, which gave him a total of 64 yards in the game. And we look at the kickers. Nugent, perfect. One for one on the field goals. Four for four on the extra points. And Travis Coons, one for one on the field goals and extra points. And on the defense, he had a couple sacks for Dunlap and Atkins. They actually had back-to-back sacks, as I was stumbling over earlier to say. And then uh, for Cleveland, Bryant and Kruger each had one sack. They said no turnovers in this game. And team stats, the first downs, 23 for Cincinnati, 13 for Cleveland. And on third down... 8 of 14 for Cincinnati, 57% conversion rate for the Bengals. And for Cleveland, 4 of 13, 30%. You see right there, you know, the Bengals are continuing to move the chains on third down, and they were stopping the Bengals pretty good. And on fourth down, the Bengals went for it once and converted for 100%. The Browns went for it twice. They were 50%, one for two. Of course, uh, one of those fourth down attempts was on the final play of their final play from scrimmage, which was uh, fourth and goal at the very end of the game with less than a minute left. Down by three touchdowns, Johnny Mansell ended up stepping over the line when he threw the incomplete pass when they went for it. He could have ran it in, but even why take the hit when you're down by three touchdowns anyway? It's probably what he was thinking, like, yeah, no point in the getting lit up when you're not going to make a difference. It was garbage time. But we look at total net yards, 371 for the Bengals, 213 for the Browns. And on the ground, the Bengals had more than twice as many rushing yards, 152 netted on the ground for Cincinnati, 69 netted for the Browns. All season long, the Browns have been letting up a lot of yards on the ground. And then net passing yards, 219 for Cincinnati. Dalton was sacked twice, losing 15 total yards. And then through the air for the Browns, they netted just 144. Johnny Mansell sacked three times for 24 yards total. All three sacks for the Bengals came in the second half. As he was looking a lot better in the first half, he was looking really good. But like I said, they made them adjustments at halftime. And they got in their lanes, their rushing lanes. They were able to keep them contained. They were able to actually get to them. 
and shut him down. And he became less accurate, of course, because of that pass rush in the second half that was, you know, keeping him in the pocket, not allowing him to get out and scramble as much. As Manziel is better when he's running around. Then we get the penalties. And for uh, the Browns, just four for 28 penalty yards, two against the Bengals for 20 penalty yards. Not too many penalties in this game. And then we look at the red zone, one for three for Cleveland, just 33%. And for the Bengals, three for four, 75%. And on the time possession, 36 minutes, three seconds for Cincinnati, 23 minutes, 57 seconds for Cleveland. And really in that second half, the Browns just really took over. It was kind of a tale of two games. The first half, it was a real close, tight battle. And then in the second half, the Browns really, or the Bengals rather, showed that they were the dominant team. They showed that they are a team that deserves to be undefeated at the midway point in this season as they showed that they actually really are the class of the AFC and the class of that division. They now lead the AFC North by four games over the Steelers. At 8-0, the Steelers are 4-4. and So Cincinnati is definitely in the driver's seat. Of course, three teams are undefeated in the AFC, so they're going to have to keep it pedal to the metal to secure a first-round bye and possibly home field advantage. They're right there tied in a three-way tie for first place for that number one seed here at the midway point with the Patriots and the Browns. You saw they dominated, though, with uh, the time of possession. Also in the red zone, they were able to shut down the Browns, allowing just the one touchdown in the game. And then, you know, on the other side, they were able to punch it in, even though the touchdowns actually were all passes, you know, in the red zone. So it's three red zone passing touchdowns as Tyler Eifert is definitely a dangerous weapon in that red zone. Is the one rushing touchdown was the end around by Sanu for you know from the 25. So you know, Andy Dalton coming up clutch with those red zone passes to Tyler Eifert, Eifert making some heads up plays on all those you know good catches as Tyler Eifert continues to be having a great season, having a breakout season. Is he's definitely one of the top tight ends in the league. He's right up there with uh, Gronkowski. In that conversation is Gronkowski. They say, you know, rightfully so, he's one of the best ever. And Eifert, although he's just in his third year, I believe, he's uh, right there in that conversation, especially the way he's playing here in 2015. Another big game, three touchdowns for Eifert. And, of course, Andy Dalton getting him the rock. And that defense doing their job, just allowing the one field goal, the one touchdown, and shutting them out in the second half. That's also a really good sign for a strong defense when you can shut them down in the second half, down the stretch, getting stronger, getting better, instead of uh, the other way around where you know teams usually fall apart in the second half. But the Bengals, they get stronger as the game goes on. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Definitely interested to read your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much for listening. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you're having a good week. And I hope you had a good day. And I hope you have a good weekend. And enjoy all the sports.